Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, uh, those who are in the sanctuary and those who've joined us online. My name is John Sproul, my pronouns are he and him, and I am your service leader today. Uh, before we begin, we just have a few announcements. One, you, uh, I'll just say that you will have noticed as you came in, Marilyn Gay and Ruth Marriott have established the work with Amnesty International and there are some letter writing campaign tables in the hall so I'd encourage you to see that as you um, those in the sanctuary when you exit but Suzanne Rattan I think you had an announcement you wanted to make oh When I was little, I used to be Sue, and then I thought Susan was a lot more elegant than <laughs> Sue. Um, I am with the ministerial transition team, and uh, our job is to prepare members of the congregation for a vote in the spring as to whether to change our minister's uh, uh, hiring from a contract to a, a permanent, or, permanent minister and the best description of this I have heard from Reverend Rosemary herself it's basically going from dating to marriage <laughs> and and uh, so we we want members to think about it we are having uh, uh, little meetings after two services in January on the 8th and the 15th and please sign up there are sign up sheets out there and you will be getting emails from me too, or an email at least, giving you a little more information, because it's a big, it's a big deal, and uh, our job is to make you guys aware of it. Thanks, Susan. And now we have a very, um, uh, announcement from our very engaging Minister Reverend Rosemary. <laughs> Susan, I think we're at least living together. Rosemary Morrison, I'm the minister here, and I just wanted to bring uh, the uh, Blue Sunday, Blue, Blue Christmas this Friday is um, at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary, and there will be refreshments afterwards, and then uh, there will be a Christmas Eve service, um, so at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, plan to attend, it should be quite lovely, um, well that's what I'm hoping for anyway, so... It's a full calendar for everyone for Christmas, and I know and I hope that you can find time to celebrate the season with UCE. Thanks very much. Uh, and so as we um, uh, start the service, I just encourage everybody to turn off anything they have that buzz. So there are beeps and kind of enter into a time of kind of silence to be able to uh, be together today. The Unitarian Universalist faith is a creedless community dedicated to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace a pluralist philosophy, opening our hearts and minds to the diverse ideas, feelings, and expressions of our world community. Whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, Whomever you love, however you identify, you are welcome here today. We respectfully acknowledge we're located on Treaty 6 territory, which is a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwa, Saltu, Ashinobnabi, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. We're glad to have you all with us here this morning. We hope you find something in the service today that nourishes your spirit and helps you find, if you've lost it, and keep, if you have found it already, your balance. We open the service now, and I'm so thrilled by this, with a musical prelude offering each of us a time of quiet contemplation and inspiration. We're blessed with having an exceptional Edmonton artist filled with talent and filled with spirit, uh, Beth Portman, who is telling us to let it snow. Good morning, everyone. But the fire is so delightful. The 
sends me no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping. And I brought some coat for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, now I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. All the fire is slow dying, and my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, oh let it snow, let it snow. Thank you, Beth. That was awesome. Again, I'm Reverend Rosemary Morrison. My pronouns are she and her, and I'd like to add my welcome to John's. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm especially grateful to those that have left, lent their time, energy, talent to make today's service a success. We're beginning to get into the thick of the holiday season, and there is an air of expectancy. There's expectancy in the air as we move through the Advent season. I hope this hour brings you a sense of calm in the chaos, that your mind, body, and spirit find solace, and that you leave feeling refreshed and ready to face another week. We are going to continue our wishing tree ritual this morning, and this Advent week we are thinking about joy. As we go through the service, keep thinking and put in the back of your mind what brings you joy. It could be something in or about this congregation that brings you joy, or your family, your work, going to the library. I know that brings me joy. Really anything. Something that when you think about it makes your heart feel warm and happy. And when you get that perfect word or not perfect word or phrase, write it down on your holly leaf. And there's lots of holly leaves in the back. You can put up your hand and maybe someone will bring it to you. And later on, you'll have an opportunity to place your holly leaves on the tree. And now I would like to open up our service with words by Reverend Gretchen Haley. Suddenly awake with awe. Do not fail to be surprised by the catching of your breath, the quickening of your heart, the fullness of your eyes, wide and suddenly awake with joy and awe. Here is a place filled with wonder that still there might be something new born today, that we might be born anew today. Do not fail to notice the changing, the life full and abundant, already beginning by our coming together, already possible by the promises we make. To give, to receive, to become more together, and to forgive. Again and again, the falling short that is already here, always here. Here we find ourselves among the courageous, feeling, feeling ourselves trying to become brave with each in and each out of breath. Each word, each pause, each song. 
We give thanks to be on this journey. Come, let us worship together. And I would like to invite Marilyn Gay to come and light our chalice for us, please. And I will read the chalice lighting words. Deep Calls Unto Deep by Gordon McKeeman. Deep calls unto deep. Joy calls unto joy. Light calls unto light. Let the kindling of this flame rekindle in us the inner light of hope of peace and of love. And as one flame lights another, no, nor grows the less, we pledge ourselves to be bearers of the light wherever we are. Thank you. Um, no, thank you, but thank you for asking. Yeah, no, uh, that is going to be a little later on in the service. After, uh, after our first hymn, which we're going to sing now, um, Morning Has Come, which Karen is going to th play through once because I thought it was a familiar hymn, and it is not. So please rise in body or spirit and sing hymn number 1000, Morning Has Come. It is now time for the lighting of our Advent calend uh, candles, calendars. Um, <laughs> and the placing of candles upon a circle of evergreens, which is to my right, is an age-old tradition. And lighting additional candles each day or week as the light wanes has been part of the human rituals for centuries upon centuries and certainly a ritual in our church. We're warmed by the glow, we are reminded that the wheel of the season will turn and brilliant lengthening days will come again. The original Advent wreath in the Christian tradition, Christ, well, Christian tradition dates back to the 16th century and included a candle for each of the 24 days leading up to Christmas. For us here in this time, the circle of evergreens reminds us that life and love will never end. Uh, and with that sentiment in mind, I, Corley Cairns, I would ask to come up and be the lighter of our, um, the candles. For us here in the circle of time, we light candles each week with anticipation as we know a new season will soon be here, days will become longer, and we know the warmth of the candles will soon be replaced by the warmth of the sun. On our first Advent Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, helping us understand that hope motivates us and encourages us to become our best selves. The second candle, the candle of peace, was lit last Sunday. The candle of peace reminds us we are asked to be gentle with ourselves, each other, and creation. This morning, we light the candle of joy. 
It asks us to consider these questions. Where do we find joy? Is it in the simple things like a warm and fragrant cup of tea? Or something monumental like the birth of a new family member? Or a peaceful rest after a life well lived? Or a brilliant guest artist entertaining us with joy? In this, the season of sharing, may we find joy in the mundane, the monumental, the familiar, and the strange. I give you some wishes from Shakespeare. With mirth and laughter, let old wrinkles come. And make the upcoming hour overflow with joy. And let pleasure drown the brim. Joy can sometimes be elusive, and so we light this candle to help guide our way. We will now have, thank you, we will now have a sharing of selections from a remarkable seasonal story that I remember joyfully from my childhood, The Velveteen Rabbit. The Velveteen Rabbit, or how Toys Become Real by Marjorie Williams. There was, once, there was once a velveteen rabbit, and in the beginning he was really splendid. He was fat and bunchy. As a rabbit should be, his coat was spotted and brown. Spotted brown and white, he had real thread whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink sateen. On Christmas morning, when he sat wedged at the top of the child's stocking, with a sprig of holly between his paws, the effect was charming. There were other things in the stocking, but the rabbit was quite the best of all. For at least two hours, the child loved the rabbit. And then the velveteen rabbit was forgotten. He was naturally shy, and being only made of velveteen, some of the other very expensive toys snubbed him. And between them all, poor little rabbit was made to feel very insignificant and commonplace. And the only person that was kind to him was the skin horse. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the other toys. He was so old that his brown coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath, and most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to thread bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of toys, and they boasted and swaggered about their mechanical parts, and their, but by and by, their mainsprings and broke and they passed away. And he knew that they were only toys and would never turn into anything else. For nursery magic is very strange and wonderful. And only those playthings that are old and wise and experienced like the skin horse understand about it. What is real? asked the rabbit one day. Does it mean having a motor and that buzzes or a wind-up handle? Real isn't how you were made, said the skin horse. It's, it's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up? Or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people that break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes have dropped out and you get loose in the joints and 
very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, said the rabbit. The boy's uncle made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago. But once you are real, you can't become unreal. The rabbit sighed. He, he thought it would be a long time before this magic called real happened to him. He longed to become real, to know what it felt like, and yet the idea of growing shabby and losing his eyes and whiskers was rather sad. He wished he could become these things without uncomfortable things happening to him. One evening when the boy was going to bed, he, he couldn't find the china doll that he always slept with. Nana was in a hurry, and it was too much trouble to fight, hunt for the china dog at bedtime. So she simply looked about her, and seeing the cupboard door open, she made a swoop. Here, she said, take your old bunny. He'll do to sleep with you. And she dragged the rabbit out by one ear and put him in the boy's arms. That night, and for many nights after, the velveteen rabbit slept in the boy's bed. At first he found it rather uncomfortable, for the boy hugged him very tight. And sometimes he rolled over on him, and sometimes he pushed him so far up under the pillow that the rabbit could scarcely breathe. And he missed, too, those long moonlight hours in the nursery when all the house was silent and his talks. He missed his talks with the skin horse. But soon he grew to like it, for the boy used to talk to him, and they had splendid games together. Time passed, and then spring came, and one day Rabbit got lost in the garden. The boy couldn't go to sleep unless he had, unless the rabbit was there. And so Nana, <clears throat> she wasn't happy about it, had to go out into the garden to fetch him. Nana grumbled as she wiped down the rabbit with the corner of her apron. I suppose you have to have your old bunny, she said. Fancy all that fuss for a toy. The boy sat up in bed and stretched out his hands. Give me my bunny, he said. You mustn't say that. He isn't a toy. He's real. When the rabbit heard that, he was so happy, for he, now he knew that what the skin horse had said was true at last. The nursery magic had happened to him, and he was a toy no longer. He was real. The boy himself had said it. That night he was almost too happy to sleep, and so much love stirred in his little sawdust heart that it almost burst. And into his boot button eyes that had long ago lost their polish, there came a look of wisdom and beauty, so that even Nana noticed the next morning when she picked him up and she said, I declare if that old bunny hasn't got quite the expression. Thanks very much. Um, now, of course, given the theme for today, it certainly is, um, as you know, there is much more joy in giving than receiving. And so it's time for the sharing of our abundance. Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. And one of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity is therefore one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal well-being and the well-being of our church. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment beyond our walls. Uh, this month, it's not going to be on beyond our walls. We are actually supporting through the unidentified uh, cash is going to be received for the minister's discretionary fund. And that's uh, one which uh, fund is set up to, for the minister at her discretion to assist some of us in our own community 
who are having some times where a little help might uh, benefit them and give them a bit of joy. So during the collection of, uh, in the sanctuary, we're going to be blessed with the great joy of a duet with Reverend Rosemary and Karen Mills. Now, with great pleasure and joy, again, I'd like to welcome our guests to share her talents. And we all, as city dwellers, can think about Christmas time in the city. If you have any jingle bells out there, you are more than welcome to jingle them. Or maybe keys. Do you have some keys? How about you grab some keys out and we'll do some jingling, okay? Add a little bit of, a bit of that. Can you hear the uke? Okay. Let's hear those jingles. City street light, city street light, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. City top, I'm gonna, we're gonna start again. We're gonna start again on that. We wanna get this just right. That was our warm up, okay? Take two be for Beth. <laughs> city street light, city stock light. Again, what's going on? It must be all that bustle. Okay, this is not good, this is not good. Okay, jingle, you gotta cover up my mistakes, okay? Yeah. City streets, right, city drunk, dressed in holiday style. In the air there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, beating by, laugh to smile. And on every street corner you'll hear silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas day. City stars.
stoplights, even stoplights blinking red and green as the shoppers rush home with their treasures. See the kids bunch, see the kids bunch, this is Santa's big scene. And on every street corner you'll hear silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Let's hear those jingles. Lights red and green as the shoppers rush home with their presents. See the kids grunt, see the kids bunch. This is Santa's big scene. On on every street corner you'll hear oh silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring. Soon it will. Christmas Day. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Lovely, everyone. Thank you for jingling those jingle bells. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. That was lovely and fun. We're now entering a time in our service when we're going to move, think about our inner life a little bit and uh, have some time for quiet reflection and meditation. So I invite you, always by invitation, never by demand, to focus in on your breath and take a couple of long, deep breaths. Find your center, put your feet on the floor if that helps and sink into whatever it is that is supporting you, being the chair, be it the chair, the couch, the bed, the floor, whatever it is, wherever you are. I invite you to focus in and follow your breath as it goes through your nose, and then down into your lungs and into your belly. Let your belly expand to meet that breath, breathing way down into your tummy. I'm going to read a poem by Mary Oliver, and we'll have a few moments of silence. I'll read it again, and then we'll have a few moments of silence, and then to come out of that silence, Karen will lead us into singing What a Wonderful World. Mysteries, Yes, by Mary Oliver. Truly, we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing in the mouths of the lambs. How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity, while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will be never broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. And let me keep company always who, with those who say, look and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads. Truly, we live with, mar with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing in the mouths of lambs. How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity, 
while we ourselves dream of rising, how two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers and let me keep company always with those who say look and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads. This meditative and quiet spirit in our hearts, I invite us to light candles of joy or concern. This ritual allows us a chance to unburden some of what might be burdening you, us, and to share joy as well in the lighting of a candle. And I invite you to come forward now to do so. You can line up this way, and then as you light the candle, if you could face towards the back so that the folks online aren't just can see who, who, who you are, and to know that you will be on the camera when you do that. Okay. <laughs>
John will light, light a last candle for all of those joys, concerns, celebrations that remain in our subconscious, unlit, but not unloved. And may the lighting of these candles ease your sorrow, lessen your pain, alleviate some of the grief, and may the lighting of these candles increase your joy and give you life abundant. The message this morning is entitled, Joy and Wonder Are Woven Fine. William Blake writes, Joy and Woe, Joy, my message is joy and wonder. William Blake write, wrote, joy and woe are woven fine, a clothing for the soul divine. Under every grief and pine runs a joy with silken twine. Blake's words remind us that everything cannot be just one way or another. We are constantly in this state of betwixt and between, of things being ambiguous, of being happy and sad at the same time, over the same outcome. We are such complicated critters. And in this season, it becomes even more so. We are excited about the holidays, whatever holiday it is that you and yours celebrate while at the same time you could be pining for an era long gone. What is it that you have traditionally celebrated this time of year? So many festivals and celebrations. Hanukkah, with its miracle of one ninths amount of oil keeping the lamps lit for eight nights. Or maybe Diwali, the festival of lights or St. Lucia Day that will be celebrated on the 13th of this month. A beautiful, a beautiful celebration, beautiful rituals. Perhaps you identify with the rich pagan traditions of the season, solstice and yuletide. Or maybe you're like me and you just love to learn about and hear all the stories from all the ancient and new traditions around the globe. But what is it about Christmas, this holiday season, that makes this time of year so special? Why do we like it so much? Well, maybe not everyone does, but there is a multi-billion dollar industry out there wanting us to like it enough to elicit something from us, like our money. What is that thing, that wonder-filled thing that makes this time of year so special for so many? So my question, you know, we all sort of have a question. Some people have a question when, some people have a question how, some keep people have a question what. My question has always been why. I always want to know why something is going to happen or why we do things. So this message answers my question, why? And I have turned to the Reverend Howard Thurman and his book, The Mood of Christmas, to answer my why question. This little book of meditations was published in 1973. If you haven't heard of Howard Thurman, he was born in 1899. He was an author, philosopher, theologian, mystic, educator, and civil rights leader. His grandmother, Nancy Ambrose, was enslaved on a plantation in Florida and who he says was a major influence in his life. He was a prolific writer and upon his death in 1981, he had been Dean of Chapel at Howard University and Boston University for more than two decades. He wrote 21 books and edited many others and in 1944, Thurman co-founded San Francisco's Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples, the first integrated interfaith religious congregation in the United States. 
raised Baptist, early on he began moving toward living the life of a mystic as he found meaning and delight in nature and the direct experience of the divine. I think if he'd lived long enough, he would have been a Unitarian. And I'd like to share a few of his meditations to help us understand this delight we have in Christmas. From his meditation on the second, for the second day of Christmas, December 26th, titled, The Joy of Christmas. The mood of Christmas, what is it? It is the quickening of the presence of other human beings into who, whose lives a precious part of our own has been released. It is the memory of other days in which an angel appeared spreading a halo over an ordinary moment or a commonplace event. It is an iridescence of sheer delight that bathes one's whole being something more wonder than words can ever tell. Thurman is saying that Christmas is about delight and wonder, about experiencing joy in the commonplace, willing to see the best in those around us, and marveling at everyday occurrences like the birth of a child. It is suggested by Bruce Epperly in his book, The Work of Christmas, The Twelve Days of Christmas with Howard Thurman, that if we open our hearts to the Christmas spirit, we will discover life as too wonderful to imagine. There will be no words, simply gratitude for the, for the opportunity to share in a holy birth and experience this little child in every encounter. He goes on to suggest that as a spiritual practice, as, as we move through this special time, we look for the light within those we encounter by design or chance our family and friends, perhaps, and also the homeless and the vulnerable. Perhaps if we look, we'll catch glimpses of something that catches our breath or brings warmth to our hearts. The meditation for the third day of Christmas, Thurman writes, the quality of Christmas, what is it? It is the fullness with which ripe open, which, with which fruit ripens. Blossoms unfold into flowers and live coals glow in the darkness. It is the richness of vibrant colors, the calm purple of grapes, the, the exciting redness of tomatoes, the shimmering light on the noiseless stirring of a lake or a sunset. It is the sense of plateau with a large rock behind which, which one can take temporary respite from the winds that chill. So in this meditation, Thurman alludes to an important angle of why we find joy and wonder in this season. The world lights up and dresses up for our enjoyment and our pleasure. Twinkling lights, vibrant colors, adorn homes, shops, buildings, and even bridges across the North Saskatchewan River. It is cold, and yet we can celebrate beauty and find respite in these displays created simply to delight our senses. This meditation of Thurman's reminds me to stop taking for granted all this, med all this beauty and be humbled by it and express my gratitude. And we do have so much to be grateful for. And the abundance of this time of year reminds us to lead with a thank you for all the richness we encounter. Gratitude can happen even when things aren't perfect. The meditation for the eighth day of Christmas, which is New Year's Day, is called Our Better Angels. 
If we had time, I would love to read all of them to you. They're all equally beautiful. But on this, for this day, Thurman writes, The true meaning of Christmas, or the holiday season, is expressed in the sharing of one's graces in a world in which it is so easy to become callous, insensitive, and hard. Once this spirit becomes part of a person's life, every day is Christmas, and every night is freighted with the dawning of fresh and perhaps holy adventure. What I took from it, what is that we are freighting or carrying and then offering to the world? What is in our cargo that will show itself? We can't hide our true essence, our true nature. If we are carrying joy in our cargo, in our, if we are freighting it, think of a big semi-truck. What's in your semi-truck of your heart? If we are carrying joy, joy will be the grace we share with the world. If a person is carrying or freighting around unresolved resentment, anger, and traumas, that is what we will deliver to the world. We can see evidence of that everywhere we turn. But here, Thurman is suggesting that now, at this special time, we can maybe counteract all that cargo of pain and suffering by offering grace and kindness. That is what will make this time special. At every turn, we are reminded that caring and compassionate hearts will make a difference. Epperly has taken it even, even a step further. He says, This time of year calls us to follow our highest and best visions of ourselves into our daily lives, occupations, avocations, and citizenship. We are asked to set aside selfishness and reach out past our difference, offering love, forgiveness, and healing to every situation. And I wonder, what would that be like? How would it change us? The one offering the love, the forgiveness, and the healing we would certainly be challenged to look for the best in those around us and to advocate for those less fortunate than ourselves. The last of Thurman's meditations that I wish to bring to you is from the 12th day of Christmas, January 5th. And this is Thurman's perhaps most famous piece of writing or the one that may be the most recognized. And he writes, When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, and when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring, to bring peace among siblings, to make music in the heart. My question when I started this message was, what is that thing, that wonderful filled thing that makes this time of year so special for so many and why, most importantly, why. Thurman's last meditation, I think, begins to answer that question. This time of year, we actually focus a little more on how to help those less fortunate. Food bank collection bins at every event. Ads asking us to contribute so that everyone can enjoy at least some of what everybody else has. But Thurman goes a little further. 
He is asking us to not stop on the 12th day of Christmas, but to bring this giving and caring spirit into our everyday lives. Do not turn away when we see something difficult. To pay attention. To notice and to acknowledge our privilege and then try to figure out how to help level the playing field. So why is this time of year so special? Perhaps because we aren't as inward looking and instead we desire to be more generous. Maybe it's because there's more beauty. Maybe it's because there's more music. Maybe it's because we simply want it to be. I also know that not everyone loves this time of year. And so, there will be a blue Christmas service this Friday night at 7 o'clock. And there, we will explore those ideas, thoughts, and feelings. Thurman tells us that the work we need to be engaging in is not how to make ourselves happy or feel better, but to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among siblings, and to make music in the heart. Thurman is suggesting that to find the joy and wonder of the season, we must look outside of ourselves and with hearts full of gratitude and joy say, how can I help? How can I serve? What can I do to lessen the misery and pain of those less fortunate than myself? Perhaps it is when we carry out these acts of kindness and caring, we find the magic and our hearts will be filled with wonder and awe. May you find wonder and joy and awe as we journey and you journey toward the returning of the light. Blessed be and amen. Just take about 10 seconds while you think about your holly leaf. And have you got something written on it? A phrase or a word? Something that fills your heart with joy? And then I'll ask you to go ahead and put it on the wishing tree. Yes, there's some at the back if, if you didn't get one. And then go ahead and continue to decorate our, our beautiful wishing tree that's filled with joy. Now, as we're just finishing decking the uh, trees, we're going to move on to a much bigger task and have you all stand and join us in singing Deck the Halls. Uh, hall. 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 <laughs>
close to coming to the time and the end of our time together, and so it, um, uh, uh, now we'll have the extinguishing of the Maryland of, of the flame, of our chalice, and uh, just uh, read some words by Kendall R. Gibbons. Only one thing required of us. There is, finally, only one thing required of us, that is to take life whole, the sunlight and the shadows together, to live the life that is given us with courage and humor and truth. We have such a little moment out of the vastness of time for all our wondering and loving. Therefore, let there be no half-heartedness. Rather, let the soul be ardent in its pain, in its yearning, in its praise. Then shall peace enfold our days, and glory shall not fade from our lives. And I offer you words of benediction after which Beth will grace us and bless us with her wonderful music. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things can break, but they can be mended, but not with time as they say, with intention. So please, go and love intentionally. Love extravagantly and love unconditionally. For the broken world waits in darkness for the love and the light that is within all of you. Go in peace, gentle people. Go in peace. Amen. I'd like to invite Beth come, to come up, and then afterwards we will sing our linking song, Carry the Flame. Thank you. What a beautiful service. Oh, my goodness. So lovely. So lovely. Now, I don't know if you grew up with, you know, all those wonderful animated films from, or TV shows from, uh, you know, the 1960s and stuff like Charlie Brown's Christmas and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's, yeah. that's my childhood. And uh, so I wanted to do one of those songs from uh, Rudolph. And um, so if you know it, please join in. If you want to have your jingle bells, you, know, you can always add that. Let's get those keys out. It just adds a little bit more. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know, but there'll be snow, so have a cup of cheer. We'll have a holly jolly Christmas. And as you walk down the street, Say hello to the friends you know and everyone you meet. Oh, 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 ho, oh, the mistletoe hung where you can see. Somebody waits for you, kiss and wants for me. Oh, have a holly jolly Christmas, and in case you didn't hear. Oh, by golly, have a holly jolly Christmas, yes, yeah. But da 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 but da 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 do do oh have a holly jolly Christmas It's the best time of the year I don't know about that we snow So have a cup of cheer Oh have a holly jolly Christmas As you walk down the street Say hello to the friends you know And everyone you made Oh, oh the mistletoe Hung where you can see Somebody waits for you, kiss them once for me. Oh, have a holly jolly Christmas, and in case you didn't hear. Oh, by golly, have a holly jolly Christmas this year. Oh, by golly, have a holly jolly Christmas this year. <laughs> wonderful jingling, wonderful jingling. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas. <laughs>